Today's video is sponsored by Element. More on them coming up. Today I'm going to take you along with me for an autumn day in the kitchen. We're gonna make a couple of my favorite beautiful seasonal foods and one that is actually straight from my garden. And I'm also going to bring you on a tour of my kitchen that I recently updated with a few budget-friendly touches that have made it feel so much more cozy and it feels so much more like my taste. So I'm gonna show you all the details of that. I am so glad that you're here today. Thank you for once again sharing your time with me and let's get started first with the kitchen details. When I originally decided to start making a few changes in my kitchen, it was just over a long weekend and I didn't plan on documenting any of this. It was really just for me, but I thought I would share it with you guys now that I realize just how much it's changed. So if you wanna see all the different variations this kitchen has been through, make sure you go back through my old videos and you can see how I've kind of been changing things over time as I find my style and just as I continue on the homemaking journey. But this is definitely my favorite that it's been so far. So I'd consider my style kind of cozy and creamy, but I love touches of a little bit more modern mixed with that kind of storied old field with the brass and wood. I love those different kind of earthy tones. So the first thing that I did in the kitchen was I wanted to change the green that I had before. So I had some green on my lower cabinets and I decided that I'd rather have all my cabinets be creamy and make just like my peninsula area a little bit earthier. And that was after some trial and error. I actually ended up painting my lower cabinets a darker color and then I decided I didn't like it and my uppers were still white and then I figured out that I didn't want to toned anymore. I just kind of wanted all my cabinets to be creamy and then have an accent with the peninsula and I love the way that this turned out. I think it is so cozy and creamy and I love the green. It's a little bit earthier and moodier and it's really just like a neutral color. So anything in here looks so good and natural with the earthier tones. The color I have now is a brownish green color. So it's very neutral, very creamy, and I think it just grounds the whole space and makes it feel really warm and inviting. So that's one of my favorite accents in the kitchen. I also redid my backsplash with just really inexpensive. These are actually peel and stick backsplash pieces. So I like to change things a lot. So sometimes I don't wanna to commit to the full price of something. So I'm testing this out, but who knows, I could change it in the future, but I really enjoy how clean and fresh and bright this looks right now. And the fact that it has creamier tones in it. So I'll link everything that I can link down below just in case you want to do any of these ideas. It's all really affordable. Another huge change that I made was swapping out my little knob pulls on my cabinets for bars and the pulls and even little knobs like the ones you're seeing here. I think that this is such an inexpensive way to make a huge impact on your kitchen, especially in a small kitchen like mine. And so accents like this made all the difference and I was able to find them on Amazon for an incredible price. They're just as good as what you would find at the big box store, but so much cheaper. And I love how this turned out. I love the mix of the more modern handlebars along with the pulls and the little knobs. I think the whole thing just complements each other really nicely and it's fun to have all the different kinds. I spent a lot of time researching, a lot of time on Pinterest and following different designers trying to see how they mix and match their handles and I discovered that I liked them all so I wanted to do them all and I think it turned out beautifully and it functions really well. Another really impactful change that I made, which I'm so glad I did considering we're going into fall and winter, is putting a bigger and cozier area rug in the kitchen. So anytime you have a small space, you wanna maximize it by putting the biggest rug you basically can fit because it makes the space feel so much bigger and it really does. It not only does it make it feel bigger, it is so nice on these cold LVP floors to have a cozy, rug that stays in place because I put down rug pads this time so when my kids go flying through the kitchen it actually stays put and I love that this rug has kind of like a vintage accent it has the little I don't know what you call it but like the loose threads on the outside of the rug so it really has that found kind of look to it but it isn't secondhand I found it online so it was really easy to get my hands on and I love how it feels I also have different rugs that are called cloud pile they're really 
really soft. I have one in just about every room of my house, including my living room, and then two huge ones in my kids' bedrooms because their rooms are small. So I basically covered the whole floor with this really amazingly soft floor that you just want to lay on. It is like a hug from your floor. So I was going back and forth between that and this rug. This rug's a little bit less fuzzy, but in the kitchen, that is perfect. It's enough to kind of catch the crumbs and hide it, but not so much that it's going to be buried in there forever. They had another one too that was like creamy and burgundy. It was really like that farmhousey feel and I love that look, but I knew in the kitchen there's no way we could keep it clean. So I'm super happy with this darker kind of moodier blue. I kept my floating shelves the same just because I already had them so I didn't want to waste them and then the only difference was I moved this brass bar. I had it on another wall and I decided to put it under the shelves so I could hang some of my things and cooking items, measuring cups, oven mitts right there where they're really easy to grab and I think it just helps make the shelves look a little bit less modern and a little more homey. Now moving on to one of my favorite parts, which is the cabinet paint. It took me a long time to find the right one. I tried several different paints before I finally landed on the right one for this room and the lighting. It's so tricky to work with different lightings, but I love how this turned out. I ended up going with Benjamin Moore Creamy White, and I was between that and Benjamin Moore Natural Cream, which is a grayer version of it, and I ended up going with the more yellowy version just to get that really cozy feel in the space and I think it looks absolutely stunning it's so creamy and just warm it's just like a nice soothing canvas for the rest of the kitchen I'll leave all the things I'm mentioning down below because I know it's so nice when you see something you like in somebody's kitchen or design when they leave an exact link or an exact name for it and then you can kind of go from there and something I wanted to mention is depending on how your kitchen may face I only get a little bit of light from the north in the small window in my kitchen so it has really nice cool light so I wanted to go with a warmer cabinet but if you have a warm kitchen that has southern light coming in then to achieve a similar effect you might actually want to go with the natural cream because you'll have so much warm light kind of casting shadows on your cabinets so you can kind of play around but those are two of my favorite neutrals. Now here I wanted to show you my exact hardware. They all match and it's also similar to my sink faucet, which I wasn't actually going to replace, but then I found it on sale on Amazon for I think around $60 that day, which I had never seen one so low and it had really good reviews. So I got it to match all of the hardware because you're technically supposed to match your hardware. And so I went ahead and matched those. For the upper cabinets, we moved from knobs to handlebars. And all we had to do to install that was get a drill bit and drill through a new hole and then attach the screws and the handlebar to it. And it was a really simple process. My husband did it really quickly. All we needed were some drill bits. I think it makes such an impact. And it's also really nice to have a big handle to grab on those uppers. I love the brass pools on the drawers, but I knew it would be too much for these smaller drawers next to the dishwasher. So I wanted to use some of the smaller brass knobs and I love these. They remind me of something antique and they are just so gorgeous and they all match their champagne bronze. I don't know if I mentioned that already, but that is the color of the hardware. So I tried to keep it all with the same brand so that all of the hardware would match kind of exactly. And it is just stunning between the hardware and the cabinet color that would change your whole entire kitchen. Now on this wall that I have in my kitchen, it's kind of a narrow path through there to the fridge. And so there's not a lot I can do here. So I experimented with a couple things. The first thing I tried was doing a little bit of peel and stick wallpaper. It was kind of like this neutral tweed. It has grays and creams. And I thought it would look really pretty and kind of go with the countertops, which are also just like a peel and stick marble because I actually have granite underneath, but it was kind of busy. And I love it when things just feel soothing. So I put peel and stick marble just over my granite and so I thought it would go well with that but after my husband put a couple of the sheets up my older daughter came in and told us that it looked kind of similar to a hotel kitchen. <laughs> We pulled that down and I decided to paint it the same color as the cabinets and it looks really good and I have big plans for the wall. I already have a piece up there now and a couple things that I'm waiting on but I think you're gonna love how it turns out. So that will be coming soon in another video but for now that is the kitchen and I hope you guys enjoyed just seeing little touches you can do in an affordable way in a small space.
This is one of the most beautiful seasons for homemaking in my opinion. Everything has just kind of come out of the garden or it's still waiting there to be picked. So I picked a butternut squash which I'm going to make a simple kind of casserole lasagna type of dish out of tonight. And then I also have some beautiful big bushy flowers. These are called celosia and I've been waiting on them to get bigger all year but they're kind of done growing I think so now's the time to start picking them and I cut a few just to put in this glass vase and I love these big oversized glass vases they're just clear so you can see the beauty of not only the top of the flower but also the stem and it was such a deal I found it for I think about ten dollars Anytime I have fresh flowers in the kitchen, it just adds this ambiance of care. It feels like I put time and effort into my space and it brings us all joy to see it and it just blesses our day. So I love having those there. Although my bees are gonna be so upset with me once I cut them all down because they have had the most ginormous bees I think I've ever seen on them. So the garden is very happy with these. I've come to realize that this time of year, I really can't keep enough pumpkin pie spice in my house. So I'm putting together a little jar of it today. I'm just using three tablespoons of cinnamon. I like to use Ceylon, but any type of cinnamon works. And then I'm using some ginger root, about two teaspoons of that. And then I'm going to be using one teaspoon of allspice and one teaspoon of ground cloves. And then typically you would do one teaspoon of ground nutmeg too, but I actually prefer just a little bit less nutmeg and more of the other spices. So I'm adding about three fourths of a teaspoon of fresh ground nutmeg. And I was so excited for the first time to find fresh nutmeg. This is, I think the first time I've ever used it, but I was able to find it this week. So I'm grating that up fresh and I'm adding that straight into that pumpkin pie spice. And I'll just keep this on hand anytime I need it and I probably should have doubled it. I should have made a little bit more because I know we'll go through this so quickly. And I'm going to show you guys one of my absolute favorite sourdough recipes for this time of year that has pumpkin in it. So stay tuned because we're going to do that in just a second. But first I'm going to get dinner in the oven. Today's video is sponsored by Element. We've all been told to drink eight glasses of water a day, but actually drinking past your thirst is not a good idea. You can end up with a bunch of consequences like headaches, low energy, fatigue, cramps. So the solution to that is to replace that water with something like electrolytes. That's going to give you sodium, magnesium, and potassium, all of which are going to help your body function a lot better. I find I even sleep better when I've had a little bit of electrolytes before bed because of the magnesium and the potassium and sodium in it. Restricting sodium is usually praised, but actually for a lot of us, we need more sodium to feel our best and have optimal health. It helps you achieve all your electrolyte goals, and I'll leave research for you linked down below. That way you can look into it yourself. I know a lot of us like to go digging deeper and really look at the research as to why something is beneficial for our bodies. They actually came up with a fantastic offer for you. You can go to drinkelement.com forward slash healthy Elizabeth, and they're going to give you a free sample pack so you can try out the different flavors with any purchase. So you can try it out, see how it makes you feel. And when which flavors you enjoy the most. I will leave those links for you down in the description box and thanks so much to Element for sponsoring today's video. Tonight I'm making a butternut squash lasagna but it's kind of like a white lasagna because there's no red sauce in it. So the first thing I'm doing is just grating up some raw cheddar. This is just white cheddar. It's my favorite and I'll just mix that together with one container of full fat ricotta cheese and stir that up and that's going to be the cheesy element in this dish and it's kind of going to be like a casserole because there's not really a sauce to it but the moisture in the butternut squash kind of makes it a little bit saucy. So we're gonna mix that together and I'm gonna season it with salt and pepper and then I'm gonna prepare my butternut squash. So to prepare this butternut squash, I gave it a rinse after coming out of the garden and then I peeled the skin off and I'm just going to de-seed it and then I'm actually going to use a mandolin and make really thin slices, but you could do the same thing just with a knife. And in the meantime, I have some ground beef going in a skillet and I'm seasoning it like sausage. So I'm adding a little bit of Italian seasoning and you could add things like fennel and just season it that way or you could just use ground sausage. And then I'm also going to take some fresh spinach, a bunch of handfuls I think I used three or four handfuls of spinach and just gave that a rough chop and once that meat is done cooking I'm gonna add that into it just let it wilt down a little bit and then I'll set that aside to cool while I get my butternut squash ready to go and prepare the rest of it
If you don't know how to use a mandolin, don't worry, I don't either. I could not figure out how to use the top of it so that you hold the little plastic piece and not have to hold the actual butternut squash, but no worries. I put on an oven mitt that's nice and thick and went to town and it worked just fine. So we're putting thin slices of butternut squash in the bottom of a casserole dish and then I'm topping that with mozzarella. You want to use just sliced mozzarella, but I actually had the little pearls, so I went ahead and used those. Then I put a layer of the beef in the spinach or the pork in the spinach, whatever you want to use, sausage. And then I topped that with a little bit of our sharp cheddar ricotta mixture and layered it. And you want to make sure that each time you're doing a layer of butternut squash, you're putting plenty of salt and pepper in it because that's going to help the water kind of render out of it and help to make the creamy sauce with the ricotta. So make sure you season it as you go. The flavor will be better and just over. Overall, the whole consistency will be better. I like to end with a little bit of the beef mixture, the sharp cheddar, and the ricotta mixture right on top, and then just add a few more slices of butternut squash, and that just kind of makes it look beautiful. So now we're going to put this into the oven until it's nice and bubbly and brown, and I love this dinner because it's tons of protein, fat, and fiber. Those are my favorite things, and it's even gluten-free, and it's a beautiful dish to make this time of year. This recipe doubles as dessert and it could be a breakfast item too, but it's sourdough pumpkin cream cheese muffins. And if you've had the ones from Starbucks, these are going to be so much better. Let me tell you, they are pretty much the best muffins I think I've ever had. I'm starting by making the cream cheese filling that I'll put in it. And it's just a mixture of cream cheese and a little bit of maple syrup, or you could use coconut sugar. And I had a helper today because she was kind of fussy. She woke up from her nap too early. So a lot of the time I'm cooking with one hand and it's totally okay. So now I'm just taking one stick of butter and I'm just going to let that melt. You can use your Breville oven for that. Just put a glass bowl in there and put it on reheat or warm and that butter will slowly melt. Now I am going to do the majority of this recipe in grams because that's how I bake sourdough. I've been doing it for years just like this and I just love that it's easy. You just dump and go. I will have this recipe down below in the description box so if you want exact measurements I definitely will have them. So I'm starting with my wet ingredients and I have my pumpkin puree sourdough discard and then I'm using a mixture of coconut sugar and raw cane sugar and then I'm cracking in three eggs but you'll want to use two I'm just using three because the eggs for my chickens are really tiny so I'm using three today and then I'll stir that all together with the butter and vanilla extract and then I'll add in all-purpose flour baking powder baking soda salt and some of that homemade pumpkin pie spice that we made earlier I love having a variety of ice cream scoops on hand. They come in so handy for muffins, pancakes and batters, and different kinds of cookie doughs. So I wanted to show you that I'm using my big ice cream scoop and my tiniest ice cream scoop, which is closer to a melon baller. And then the middle size one is one that I use for my mini muffins. So to kind of help you gauge those, I'll link them down below. That way you can have the exact size I do because they are the perfect size for these kind of muffins. So I do one big scoop of the muffin batter and then I'm going to use my small little melon baller and I take a scoop of that cream cheese mixture and I give it a few um, little pinches just to get the cream cheese to come out because it's kind of thick but I put that right in the middle and then I just press it down a little bit with my finger and it makes the perfect kind of cream cheese stuffed muffin so you can either do it with a melon baller like I am or you can use just a piping bag and a tip you could do that right in the middle or just some good old-fashioned little teaspoons will work and then preheat the oven to 350 and we're going to bake these off but you could top them with a variety of different things you could top them with mini chocolate chips or oats like i'm doing 
or I actually wanted to top them off with pumpkin seeds, but I couldn't find them in my pantry at the time, but I think my kids will like this better anyway. So I'm gonna put those in the oven to bake, and then once they come out, I'll just cool those on a coolie rack. This butternut squash lasagna bake and these pumpkin cream cheese muffins are gold recipes for autumn. So I hope that you'll try them out because I know that you're going to love them. These are some of my favorites. If you have any ideas for videos that you would like to see, please leave them down below. I always love when you guys have ideas for me and videos that you're excited to see. So make sure you share that with me. Thanks so much for joining me on this cozy fall day. And thanks again to Element for sponsoring today's video.